The Bayesian alternative to ANOVA uses the linear model. So let's refresh the characteristics of the linear model when the independent variable or predictor variable x is numeric and y, which is the dependent variable or the outcome variable, must be numeric as well. So this is the um, this is the model. y is the uh, the variable that uh, we are interested in predicting. We assume that it's a random sample, so each value of y is a random sample obtained from a population. And remember, populations are hypothetical. They are large or infinite uh, sets of values. What characteristics uh, does this population have? Well, we know it's normally distributed, or we assume rather than know. No, we assume it's normally distributed. Assume is correct because it's a hypothetical population. And, well, we know that in a normal distribution we need to specify two parameters. One is the mean and the other one is the standard deviation. So the mean is going to be gamma and the standard deviation is sigma. So, okay, but how do we know about gamma and sigma? Well, we are going to estimate it with the data we have in this sample. For gamma, we are going to use this formula. Gamma equals beta 0 plus beta 1 times x. And sigma, sigma will, will be larger if the data is close to uh, the values of y, eh, sorry, the values of gamma. And, ga and sigma will be smaller if the values uh, in the data are close to gamma. So it depends on that. Okay, so how do we calculate beta 1 and beta 1? And, sorry, beta 0 and beta 1. Well, we've got in this graph uh, the variable x and all these dots are observations that uh, for each, each dot it's a um, a participant that we measure in X and in Y and this participant for example has this value on X and this value on Y and the same with all the other dots okay so the model says that um, gamma which I'm going to use to predict Y it's um, beta 0 beta 0 is here uh, which is the intercept I'm going to use the blue one so beta 0 is the intercept intercept and so that's the value of we are predicting for y uh, or the value of, of gamma uh, when x equals 0 so if x equals 0 uh, beta 0 is the value we predict for gamma so the value, that's the value of gamma, and our it is our prediction of y. Okay, so then beta 1 is going to be the slope. So beta 1, so if th this is the line, that, that's the linear model, then beta 1 indicates for a unit increase in x, what is the increase in y so basically that's it so if we are in if we say for this increase in x we've got this increase in y so we do the increase in y over the increase in in x and that's beta one okay so how do we come up with the appropriate beta 1 and beta 0? Well, we come up with that by trying to get a line that is as close as possible to the dots. So it's the, it's the line that will minimize 
the distance between the dots and the lines. By the distance, I mean this dot versus this one, all these distances. So if you, from each dot, you, you, you draw a line that separates the dot from uh, the, the linear model, then that's the, uh, that's the distance I'm talking about. So we have to come up with a beta zero and beta one that will minimize the distance between the dots and, and the line. Okay, so that is the linear model. Um, now, we typically compare the model of the, that, that claims that there is a relationship between X and Y with a model that claims that there is no relationship. So that is the null model, would we'll say that beta zero is the mean of y and beta one is zero. So there is no slope. So for each increase in x, there is zero increase in y. That's why the slope is zero. So we are going to compare basically whether the beta one in the linear model it's different than zero. That's that's the the main point of the linear model. Now and remember, there is one part that is um, that is stochastic. Basically, is not determined. So the the value of gamma, we determine it with the value of gamma. We determine it with this equation, but the value of y. So this, this part we, de we determine it, but then there is one aspect that, that is more random. So basically we said there is a normal distribution with sigma. Okay, so basically for each value of x we have, we have to draw a normal distribution that, and that's um, the random part of our model. Okay, and, and this. This is infinite number of normal distributions because x is a continuous variable. But I cannot do infinite number of normal distributions. So that's the, that's the model and that, that, uh, that we use um, for predicting values of y based on values of x.